We can demonstrate by the way in which we conduct ourselves in a peaceful, nonviolent compliance with the court's order that we want to teach our children how to respect each other by our own conduct as we respect each other. We look forward to a peaceful and constructive opening of school tomorrow, one which will give the kind of opportunity and the kind of atmosphere in which the children of this school district are going to get off to a good start and a new development in their educational careers. We have uh, been and we are now and we will continue to be uh, monitoring this entire situation. Uh, from what we know, uh, we are very optimistic. We see absolutely no problems on the horizon. Uh, I'm very hopeful that uh, very shortly we can reassign the people that we have assigned to this uh, to do other kinds of uh, police work that we think uh, is appropriate. And I simply want to assure uh, all parents that uh, our principal interest is the safety of all of the children uh, involved in this operation. The one uh, Let me just set the format. I will make a brief statement. I'll then. As we're about to open a very important school year tomorrow, the Los Angeles community is faced with another opportunity to demonstrate its greatness. The people of this area have responded so well in times of crisis, in times of peril, in times of disaster. And while the opening of school is neither or none of these, I think it is an opportunity for us to once again look at how we respond to the important circumstances that f confront this city. Whether it has been an oil embargo or an energy shortage or a water conservation program or an earthquake or a fire, the people of Los Angeles have always shown their greatness by responding very well. Tomorrow we're asking them once again to respond in that fashion to make this city proud of them, to be proud of our children and they in turn to be proud of us. Around me here this morning, representing the Council on Peace and Equality and other leaders in the community who have, for the past two years, uh, done an outstanding job of preparing the climate in which all of us could say today, the time has come and we ask you today, obey the law comply with the court's order and do it in a peaceful and constructive way. The president of the Council on Peace and Equality, who has worked so hard of the uh, Board of Education, I'm going to call upon him at this time to make a brief statement. Art. Thank you, Mayor Bradley. It's been my pleasure, a coalition of responsible leaders from business, labor, I'd group of citizens of this community. As a leader of that group, it is just my special to our cause in or taking the opportunity We appeal to all our fellow citizens to protect our children's right to gain their education under peaceful and assuring circumstances. And at the same time, we must ensure equality as well as the highest standards of education for all our children. And as we face the court-ordered desegregation of our public schools, we should be guided by our moral teachings 
as well as the experience of other cities. We must avoid the dissension and violence which harm the community and especially harm our children. It is our duty as law-abiding citizens to observe the court order and to assist others in observing it. In order that there will be no confusion or misunderstanding, proper planning, good communications, wholesome community involvement. I was pleased that the spokespersons for Boy, the bus, bus stop, the uh, principal opponents to this implementation of the plan, have also said, don't boycott. Comply with the law. If there is a challenge to the, the law, it will be through the court procedures. And I think that's the way it ought to be, and I'm pleased about that. 